Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about the analysis of frames and machines. Uh, so just a quick review, a frame or a machine is a type of engineering structure where there's at least one member that is not a two-force member. Uh, so this, for, this is a member that's going to have forces acting on three or more locations. Uh, so some examples, we've got this pair of scissors. If I'm cutting something, I have a force right here from whatever I'm cutting. I've got the pin joint in the middle, and I'll be pressing down on the handle part over here. So they've got one, two, three locations. This is going to be a machine because it's not rigid. Uh, and then over here on this other side, I've got a, a stool. And this one is actually going to be a frame. And if you look at the leg, it's connected here at the top, here in the middle. And it's got a contact point down here on the ground. So this leg is going to be a three-force member. Uh, and therefore, this piece is not a truss. So either one of these two options, a frame or a machine, we're going to analyze it in the same way. So <clears throat> the assumptions for all of this, we're assuming the whole thing is going to be in equilibrium. Uh, and if it's rigid as a whole, then we can analyze it as a single rigid body to find some of those external reaction forces. The second part of this is going to be we're going to, for each component, uh, if the whole stool is in equilibrium, then we can also assume that the leg of the stool is in equilibrium. So we separate all the pieces, uh, and then we can look at each individual piece as a body in equilibrium kind of independently. Uh, and what connects these pieces is going to be the Newton's third law pairs. So if I imagine I've got the leg of the stool and the top of the stool, those are connected. Uh, so the forces that the top of the stool exerts on the leg are going to be equal and opposite to the forces that the leg exerts on the top of the stool. So <clears throat> These paired connections let us kind of connect all of those separate pieces of our body. To an analyze this kind of in, in depth, uh, our process is as follows. So step one is going to be to draw your diagram and you're going to label all the joints. Uh, just like you did for trusses uh, and for, well, for trusses, you're going to do for frames and machines. So this is an A-frame piece. I've got joint A, B, C, D, and E. And I would talk about the different members. So I've got member ABC, member CDE, and this cross beam member BD. Uh, the first thing I kind of want to look for a few things in my diagram. I want to look to see if this is independently rigid. And what that means is if I separate it from the ground, is it still rigid? So no machine is going to be independently rigid because they're not rigid in the first place. Uh, and some frames are actually only rigid because they're connected to the ground. But if I were to take away the ground in both of these pieces uh, and kind of hold this thing up, none of the parts would move relative to one another. It's kind of like that stool. Uh, the parts are all kind of rigidly connected together. So this piece is independently rigid, uh, and I'm going to use that later on. And I also need to determine which members are two force members, uh, if any. Uh, so member A, B, C, we've got forces here, forces here, and forces here. So this is not a two-force member. Member CDE, I've got forces up here, forces here, forces here, and forces here. Not a two-force member. Uh, BD, I've got forces at B and D. So this one is a two-force member because I've only got forces at those two locations. And I can use that as well in my later analysis. So step two, this is if and only if the frame is independently rigid. I can separate this from the, uh, the base and treat it as a, a full rigid body. Um, so <clears throat> I would have, from this pin joint, I'd have forces in the x and y. And I had a roller over on this side, I have force in the y. If I do my three, uh, draw out my three body diagram like this, write out my equilibrium equation. So sum of forces in the x, sum of forces in the y, and sum of moments about some point, I'll be able to solve for this, these three uh, reaction forces. Uh, if it's not independently rigid, we just skip this step entirely. So after that, step three, we're going to separate our, uh, our structure into different pieces. So for my A-frame, I had three different members, and I draw each one independently. You can draw a free body diagram of each one. So this is member A, B, C. I had the pin joint down here at the bottom, and at this point, if I solved step two, I would know FAX and FAY. Uh, up here at the top, I've got another pin joint with the potential for force in the X and force in the Y. Uh, at this point, I don't know the direction of the force in the X or the Y. I'm just going to draw it in 
uh, the direction on that first side doesn't really matter. Uh, and then here at B, I've got a two-force member connected. So even though B is connected by a pin joint, it's a two-force member, so it has to be pulling in the direction of that member. So you'll notice this piece is in tension, and this piece is going equal and opposite. And this is what I'm talking about with the Newton's third law pairs. If I draw in FCX and FCY over here, I need to draw on the other, the other recurrence of this. So on member C, D, E, I've got FCY is going the opposite direction, and FCX, those two pieces are going the opposite direction. Down here at FB, if it's pulling this way, it's going to be pulling that way. So I've got equal magnitude but opposite direction for each of those forces. And whenever I've got the same force showing up in two places, FB and FB, that needs to be true. So once I have my free body diagram, I'm going to write out the equilibrium equations for each component. Uh, so <clears throat> number A, B, C, I've got potential to do sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y, and the sum of moments about some point. Uh, and that'll let me solve for up to three unknowns. So if I know these two already from the external reaction forces, I can solve for one, two, three unknowns. I could solve for those three unknowns. I can do the same thing with CDE over here. Um, I can do sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y, and sum of moments about some points. Uh, and I can have the potential to solve for up to three unknowns. So if I already know CY and CX, I'm solving them over here. The only one I have left is this FD over here. Uh, and down here, remember BD, I really only have one useful equation, sum of forces in the X, uh, and that sum of forces in the why there are no forces in the Y and some moments, there's really no moments to speak of, uh, but I get one equation from that. So I get three equations from this, three equations from this, one equation for this down here. And that's more than enough to solve for all of my unknown forces. So once I have all of those equations, I need to solve for the unknowns. Uh, and when we have lots of equations like this, it's sometimes useful to convert that system of equations into one single matrix equation, we can use a computer tool to solve for the unknowns at that point. So with that, that's all I have for the analysis of frames and machines. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.